Hi there, welcome. I'm Lauren and I share high school art lesson tips, ideas, projects, um, and anything to help you as a um, secondary art teacher. Right now it's summer and I'm kind of getting ready to go back to school and wrapping my brain around um, how I'm going to sequence my lessons. So as I was doing that, I thought I would kind of make a video and just share what I do and why I do these projects um, and kind of walk you through them. And if you, know, if you wanna use any of this in your classroom, um, I can share like in my experience what has worked well with students, what students struggled with, uh, and, and kind of how to deal with those issues that can kind of likely come up in your classroom. So, um, the very first couple days of school, I get them working right away. Um, I, I, the first thing I do is I make a huge effort to get to know their names, uh, and I wrote a whole blog post on that. So if you're interested in tips and, and tricks on how to learn all of your students' names quickly, um, I will link that here below. This very first project that I do is this NeuroDoodle project. And I also have another video and article showing you exactly um, how to approach this with your students. But I love this project for a number of reasons, but really quick, um, mostly because it really helps build trust with them. Uh, they, they see that they can be successful even if they don't have any drawing skills yet and uh, they really learn a lot from it too. So, it, you know, they get some experience smoothing out lines and trusting their gut and their intuition. And also it's very kind of relaxing and meditative. So this is a great, very, like very first starter lesson. Like I jump right into it on the first day of school. Um, but then when we're done with this, then my next project, I, I have a very short period of time with them. So I jump right into, I wouldn't say realistic drawing, but um, maybe more representational drawing and teaching them uh, some, some tools uh, that can really help improve their drawing skills and boost their confidence. So the, the next assignment that I do is a simple line drawing, kind of like a cartoon. Um, and I use the X grip method to help them break things down a bit. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I love teaching the X-Grid method first. Okay, so here I'm gonna show you uh, how I approach uh, teaching my students how to draw uh, as one, their second project ever in Fine Art One. So I begin with, I always try to start off very small and have them practice their skills, usually with a worksheet or some sort of small exercise that isn't necessarily on like good paper. Um, so they could kind of get used to the process and make any mistakes right on here. And it's just a little less intimidating. I have plenty of copies available. You can actually get not this exact image, but this uh, worksheet, I believe it's like a little chicken drawing, uh, right on my website at insideoutartteacher.com. You can download it for free, or you can also download it for free uh, at my Teacher for Teachers shop. So um, let's start with why do I like uh, using the X grid method with my beginners. Number one, because I used to do regular old grid drawing in, in the beginning of the year. Uh, grid drawing is kind of controversial. Some teachers like it, some teachers don't. Um, it definitely has its pros and cons. Uh, you don't want your students to get you know uh, used to using the grid all the time, but it can be valuable in, in kind of building confidence and showing them how to break things up. I like the X grid method better uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, I found um, with grid drawing, a lot of times measuring trips them up and they get confused and discouraged. And I ended up spending a lot of my time fixing simple grids. With the X grid, there's no measuring and it's just a lot easier to find your center and break your image up without having to think too hard. So. I usually start with the worksheet, so I'm just going to start right here. So in uh, on the worksheet, if you download it, students can also scan the QR code. You can load this to your Google Classroom. 
so that so that students can see this video demonstration not this video demonstration in that video i'm actually talking to the students and showing them how to uh, break up the image and use the x-grid this video i'm more gearing towards teachers to kind of give you ideas and helpful hints and show you you know um, issues and problems that your students may run into that you know i found were common in my own classroom okay so what I love about the X grid, number one, oh, before I get too ahead of myself, I usually start with a square. Uh, so I'll find an image that is square rather than rectangular, just because that sometimes students will orient their paper wrong and they'll hold their paper this way instead of that way. And then if I don't get to them quick enough uh, or notice that they've made that mistake, early enough, then they kind of get frustrated that they, you know, it, it just alleviates one more thing that could kind of go wrong right in the beginning. Uh, so I start with a square. I already pre-cut the, the, the reference photo into a square shape, and I already cut the paper that I give them into a square shape. Um, on here, on the worksheet, uh, the box is already drawn, and, and the rubric is here so they know right away how they're being graded. I have broken up this for them, again, just to kind of help move them along, speed up the process a little bit. And, uh, you know, like I said, they could scan here and see how to break up the image even, even more and how to draw the grid in their box. Okay, so here's how you use, in case you have never used the X grid method before, you just start with an X corner to corner, and I always remind my students to draw super, super light, like lighter than you think you should. I'm drawing a little bit dark just so that you could see. I know sometimes there's a glare. Uh, so once you do the corner to corner, now you've found the center, so you don't even have to really measure. In this particular worksheet, I made two little marks right where the center is also, just to make it even easier. And then I break it up with a horizontal and a vertical line. So now we have found the center and we have an X throughout the center of our page. Now it matches the image that I've already gridded, but if students are struggling um, with a certain area, they can, they can leave their grid like this or they can break it up further. So for example, if they're having trouble, this is a little bit of a complex area, they can write on here again from corner to corner they don't even have to measure they just draw a line from corner to corner and find the center and now they have another x in this box so if this one was a little bit challenging too um, they can also break up this one some more and then they just draw that same extra guide mark on their box over here. So over here, now they've found the center. So now this may be just enough and, and helpful for them to get their big shapes in. Or if they're struggling, they can break it down further. But I usually have them kind of try to get started. And if they're still struggling with their drawing, then I just have them break it down even more. So if they still needed to break it down even more, so this is just how you use the X grid. Um, I would not necessarily have students do this right off the bat, but I'm just doing this to show you how easy it is to continue breaking up the image without even having to measure. So now we have all of these little spaces where we can hone in on and break down the the reference into simpler shapes and simpler parts okay so okay so when i get started and i'm showing students how to begin i really drill into their head um, the importance of not getting the details until the very end it's so tempting for everyone not just beginners uh to really especially well i guess especially in the beginning because they want it to look good so bad they really do want to do well so they're really zeroing in on every little thing but as we know um, zeroing in on every little thing too early can cause a lot of problems later so i really find that i do have to remind them a lot 
not get caught up in the details, not get caught up in the details. And I am always saying you will find yourself, you know, getting into the details too early and that's okay. Um, expect it to happen, just notice it and then kind of move on. So once we have the X grid drawn, the next thing I have them do is, is kind of just map everything out and find the intersections, like just the big shapes, like where do these things line up with each other? And I have them make like little tick marks, like use the, the X to kind of measure. So where does this line intersect? It's just a little bit above. So I'm making like an imaginary line here. It intersects just a little bit above here. And then this fin here kind of lines up right about in, in here, just below that. So I'm just kind of mapping out where everything goes, but not getting the details. I'm not worried about the curve. So I demonstrate this to my students. So how do I demonstrate it? Well, first I project, I have this video here and I project the video up on uh, my projector. And as the video plays, I personally talk, like I mute the video and I do my talking. I find they pay attention a little bit better that way. Uh, however, the video does have audio, uh, which is great for if they need a review or forget something um, or absent or something like that. They can, they can still, you know, see the lesson and, and understand what's going on, revisit it. Okay. So, so um, I do find like they will very early on start trying to get like the curve of everything just right. Uh, I just really, really reinforce and I walk around a lot and, and just show them and sit in small groups with them and really reiterate, even though I showed them on the projector, most will still just be nervous and, and not be sure what to do. So I will, work with them i'll grab my own worksheet and i'll kind of just do a second demo even though i already projected in a small group and show here i want to show you guys some some quick little tips to make this easier and and i'll even like purposely make some mistakes and say oh gosh look look look, look at myself fussing over the shape of that it's too early to fuss on, over the shape like even i do that uh, and that kind of eases their anxieties a little bit so here I'm still uh, mapping out kind of where everything goes and I will, you know, hone in on the details after. So, so once I get them kind of to this point and show them um, walking around and make sure that they're not like perfectly drawing each detail, like right from the beginning, I just show them over and over again, just make sure you get the big shapes, figure out where before what, where does everything go before you figure out exactly what it looks like. And if they're struggling with anything, I show them find the center, like draw yourself a little like imaginary line. It's not like a perfect grid or anything. And that will help you really get the placement first. I'm not gonna let myself uh, it's it's going to be tempting, uh, but I'm not going to let myself fuss over the details. And I also tell them over and over again and show them that uh, they need to go back and check their location of everything before they get the details because and to expect to find mistakes because mistakes are normal. So if they're not making mistakes and they're not finding mistakes, that's unusual. And I will show them like, so here I'm starting to now get some more, uh, like get a little bit more into like detail and shape, but I'm not uh, going too crazy with it. First, I'm really just looking at where everything goes. And I have to, you know, reiterate that a bunch with them in the very beginning. Uh, I like, to keep it small so that, you know, it, it doesn't take too long. We all know that students, especially today, um, struggle with focusing for too long. So if they can be successful in a short period of time, um, you are just more likely to um, like build up their desire to kind of continue and, and get better. Okay, so, so now 
uh, I would show them like I have like the base design in and now I would go back and really measure things like the spaces in between and I'll have them double check and say, oh, look, look where I went wrong right here. So again, I would do this like in small groups. You, I mean, my way is not necessarily the best way. Like I'm sure there's other ways of, of, of teaching this, um, but I'm just kind of giving you some, some tips or ideas and just pointing out like what I've noticed and what has kind of helped me. Um, and hopefully uh, maybe you can, you know, take some of this and, and just make your life a little easier too. Okay, so now I, I would be showing my students that I am um, like starting to refine things and I, and I do this in the video, but if you want to do this kind of without the video or when you're walking around in small groups, um, these are just things that um, I'm sure will, will pop up. So once they kind of have everything in here, then I have them go back and really just double check, like measure everything first, like look for just placement and relationship to each other. So this eye in relationship to the edge of the page, is it look like it has the, the same amount of space? Like don't get that line just right yet. First, make sure everything's in the right spot. Double check placement. So I love doing this in the beginning of the year. Uh, I'm going to kind of stop right here and, and just talk for a second. I like doing this in the beginning of the year because this really is the foundation and developing these habits, like going back and double checking, using guide marks if you need them, only breaking things down if you need extra kind of measure and find placement, learning how to really get the placement and space on the page and look at the big shapes as opposed to all the little details first. Uh, these are all the things that set the tone for everything else. So if I were to teach, say, shading before this, um, it's great to know how to shade. And one of the most common mistakes I see, even with some of my advanced kids, is they jump into those techniques and get caught up in the details before they've got their placement or their scale or their proportions um, correct. So really drilling that you know proportion and, and everything. You can be really, really good at shading or really, really good at color or painting, but if the, the base shape isn't there, you're gonna find yourself struggling more later. So I really like to kind of show them that, that you're building habits and you're breaking old habits uh, that will help you later and, and really make your art better in the long run. So it's a little bit more work in the beginning, especially when you're first learning, but after you develop it and it's a habit, it's second nature, you learn to double check your, your negative spaces, measure things in relationship to each other, um, double check everything before you get started. And I'll show them how frustrating it is when I like draw something and I, 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 got, I spent 20 minutes getting this fin just right and then realized this fin actually belongs over here, uh, how aggravating that can be. So. Again, I'm very forthright with them and just say, you know, your brain can only take in so much information and you can't notice, you know, every single detail of everything. So if you look around the room and you say, okay, who's wearing a um, red shirt? Now everybody looks around, looks for somebody wearing a red shirt and then ask them who is wearing a black shirt. Your brain just cannot cannot absorb everything and remember all of those things. So really like starting with looking for one thing at a time. So in this case, they're really looking for proportion first and then going back and looking at the, the negative spaces and measuring and measuring things in relationship to each other, finding the center and seeing where everything lines up. It really just helps develop those habits early on. So th this this drawing takes, I would say about one period, I think, for them to do this. And then maybe the next day they come in and they can start uh, thickening, like getting the details and 
making some of their lines from thick to thin, which they would have already practiced in the neuro project. So here they really see that this comes to life. So after they finish the worksheet, then we move on to the good paper and they already have confidence and they've practiced the skills. Um, I give them a choice. Um, I uh, divided up the images already for them. Again, it's a square, it has the rubric, everything. You can use any line drawing image that's relatively simple. Um, the more simple, the better in the beginning. I usually have available some that are a bit more challenging for students that want a little bit more of a challenge. And then some more simple ones for students that are um, maybe a little not as secure or confident in their, their abilities just yet. So these are some of the ones that um, are usually very successful, uh, very simple. So do I let the students color them in? I do sometimes let them color, but I am very specific about how they color. So I teach them in this project how to layer watercolor colored pencil and marker um, and how to choose the right colors. So I have them avoid dark colors, colors that are too dark because then they lose their lines. And I have them layer and keep their materials light. And I, I go, if you wanna, um, I go through this in the neurographic video, which will be linked at the bottom of the page, more into how I teach color. But uh, the layering, I feel like I just, uh, encourage them to, to keep it super light, like lighter than they think it should be. Uh, otherwise, I think that the coloring can sometimes take away from their image. Um, so the color is really just to embellish uh, and not to overpower the line work. So this really, this project is one of my favorites um, in, in, in Fine Art One in the beginning of the year because it really builds those foundational skills of learning how to see, learning how to double check your work. Um, and the, the images are relatively simple. Uh, so you can obviously have them color or not color. Um, but my advice is if you do let them color, um, definitely uh, I would use watercolor or just something light and transparent uh, so that it doesn't uh, take away from the line work. Um, because students really do want to see their work, the end product look good and have something that they're proud of. Um, so my fear when I do let them color is that, you know, they'll, they'll have a beautiful line drawing and then once they add color to it, then, you know, they might feel that they mess it up or go too dark and then they don't like it anymore. So this project I really love because it just really helps build confidence. So if you, the, the next thing I would do is I would uh, take a piece of eight by eight paper. Again, working with a square. Any image is fine. Uh, I do have these in my Teachers Pay Teachers shop and on my website, Inside Out Art Teacher. Uh, but again, you can use any image. Um, I break it up for them, again, just to save time. And I have these uh, instructions here and a video that they can scan and see showing them how to do the process from start to finish. Um, but again, it is the same exact process, and this is why I like to start with um, the X-Grid.